this doctor's amazing. Every time she told me to do something, I did the opposite and felt better. And I tell everyone in this room, if you want to be the healthiest person, you go to a popular doctor. Whatever they say, do the opposite. You'll be pretty healthy. By the way, are there any doctors here? Good. Now, now, don't get me wrong. Some doctors are amazing. Emergency room doctors, spinal cord injury. I mean, these doctors are a true blessing. I mean, if I get in the car today, don't tell me an apple. Send me to the emergency room. Yeah. And I hope that Dr. Dan didn't hear my lecture. But, uh, if, but if I'm going to put something in my body to create an illness, the answer isn't taking some drug to deal with the pain. The answer is to eliminate what caused the problem. Health doesn't begin with what we add to our diet. It begins with what we eliminate. Eliminate what caused the problem, and the problem will begin to go away. Everyone say eliminate. Yeah. Now say it with enthusiasm. Yeah. Great. I hope you all do that on a regular basis. Yeah. That's eliminate with enthusiasm. Yeah. Very well. So here I was on this vegetarian diet, but I made the same mistake most people make. I went on a junk food vegetarian diet because I hated the taste of produce. Let me give you an example. If you have cookies and then you have organic cookies, they're still cookies. It doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, and I wasn't eating any produce, I was on all this food in a bag, box, container, or can, thinking I'm eating the best diet in the world. But it's not the best diet in the world. Just understand, if you can't put it in the ground, it's not going to grow to more food. That's not real food. Understand, if it wasn't considered food 100 years ago, you have to reconsider if it should be considered food today. And definitely, if it has to cast your car window to be considered food, it shouldn't be eaten. That's the mistakes people made. So here I was in my junk food vegan diet, doing a little bit better, but not completely better. And then somebody told me that stress had a lot to do with my condition. So I wanted to be sure about this one, so I asked my doctor, was there any connection between stress and inflammatory bowel disease? And she said there were no medical studies to prove there was any connection between stress and inflammatory bowel disease. So when she told me that, I knew I had to reduce the stress in my life. So the first thing I did to reduce the stress in my life was I eliminated my doctor. <laughs> right away I felt better. Now let me clarify something since I am from New York. I didn't like eliminating my doctor. I just stopped going to visit her. I just want to clarify that. Uh, so uh, now I have moved to a more stressless environment. I looked all over the United States. It was about 18 years ago. And I ended up moving to a place called West Palm Beach, Florida. Huh? So I moved down there to West Palm Beach, Florida. And for the first two weeks I was there, every day I kept seeing this band past my house. And I recognized the band because it had a word on the side of the van that I couldn't pronounce. And every day I would pass my house like two or three times. So one day I said to myself, I see that van one more time. I'm gonna follow it and see where it's going. The next day the van comes speeding down my block, I jump in my car to follow it to see where it's going. The van stopped in the parking lot of a health food store. This is the first day of my life I went to a real health food store. Now I've been to many fake health food stores up to that point, but never a real health food store. Now, I'm not one to focus on negative, so I won't give you the names of these fake health food stores. I'll just give you the initials, GNC. Uh, and uh, understand, if it doesn't have produce, it's not a real health food store. So uh, the van stops, and I stop my car waiting to see what happens, and the back doors creep open very slowly, and I see like six of the most sickly looking people I've ever seen in my life practically fall out of the back of the van. And then the front door opens up very quickly, and I see one of the healthiest people I've ever seen come out of the front of the van, he starts walking towards the health food store, and they start following him in a single line. Now, I want them to know what was going on, so I just tagged along the back of the line, helping this fellow didn't count too well. And uh, we got to the front of the health food store, and the fellow said, I'm going to tell everyone what the healthiest things are in a health food store. And I said, you know, I hope he doesn't take us over to the produce section because I hated fruits and vegetables. Take a wild guess where he took us. <laughs> right over to the produce department. And he said, here it is. Fruits and vegetables, that's all you need to get well again. And I looked at him and I said, what happens if you don't like the taste of fruits and vegetables? I'll never forget, he looked me right in the eye and he said, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I told him who I was and I told him what I was doing there. And I said I had something called inflammatory bowel disease that I'd like to get rid of it. He said, we can get rid of that with no problem. I said, you know, I don't want to cut my bowl now. He said, why would you say something crazy like that? I said, because that's what my doctor told me was the only way to get drunk from this illness. He said, that's insane, that's crazy thinking. And I said, I agree. And he goes, uh, no, there's another way. And it turns out the fellow driving the van was from a raw food health spa that I had moved right next to without even knowing what raw foods were. Up to that point in my life, the only raw foods I probably was eating was guacamole and salsa, and not even knowing if that was truly raw. And uh, it was called, now I can pronounce the word, the Hippocrates Health Institute. You see, back then I was like, Hippocrates, I didn't know how to say it or anything. Uh, but it was the Hippocrates Health Institute. 
Institute, and I lived right next to there, and he started telling me a little about the raw food diet. And, and, and then I, I walked over there one day, and I read some books by Ed Wigmore and Victoria Skolvinskis about the raw food diet and enzymes and, and all this stuff. And I was excited now, and I'm saying, you know, this is great. This is good information. I was like 99% sure I was going to do this and get well again. But I don't do anything until I'm 100% sure. I still had to hear from one more person that it would work before I continued on with this. So I called my doctor up and, <laughs> and, and I told her I was going to get better from this condition. And she said, it's impossible. There's no cure. <laughs> I said, well, I'm going to go on something called a raw food diet. And I told her what it was. And I said, well, this helped me. And she said, exactly what I needed to hear to stand this path. She said, there are no medical studies to prove this work. In fact, it was bad for somebody with my condition. Oh. So that's all the reassurance I knew to know I was on the right track. Uh, so I started eating a raw food diet, and I got well again. But then I became Mr. Raw Food Crazy Man, telling everybody in the world that, you know, if they ate cooked food, they were going to die. And, <laughs> and, and I became, you know, known as that crazy guy in West Palm Beach, Florida. I mean, I would be in a supermarket, and people would be, like, running away from me. <laughs> and I was like, I lost all my friends. Nobody wanted to talk to me. Uh, but I was healthy, but nobody wanted to talk to me. And I'm a very social guy, and I just couldn't live like that. And I, I realized after a while, you know, I, I'm going to have to move somewhere where people didn't think I was crazy. You know, and I, I, I looked all over and tried to figure out where I was, and I'm just like, I just need to speak to people and so on. So I moved back to New York City, and I fit right in there. Nobody knew anything, and I said, I'm not going to talk about the raw food diet. I'm not going to mention it. I'm just going to go ahead and eat it, and that was going to be the end of that. Well, I was in New York City, and one morning I was in the subway, and I saw this, uh, this young-looking woman. She had beautiful-looking skin. So I decided I would speak to her uh, and find out why she had such beautiful looking skin. Well, it turns out she wasn't a young looking, a, a young woman. She was a grandmother and a much older lady. But now I was really curious to find out why she looked so young and vibrant. And when she gave me my answer, I thought it was on Candid Camera, one of those hitting TV shows. She said she was on a raw food diet. Here I am in the middle of New York City in the subway, and I meet this lady who says this. And I don't know why I whispered my answer, but I said to her, is anyone else in New York City eating this way? Uh, and, and she said there were, in fact, two major groups of people that were doing this. One of them was led by a fellow named Matthew Grace, who wrote a book called The Way Out. Matthew Grace had gotten himself out of a wheelchair. He had multiple sclerosis by going on a raw food diet. And the other fellow was a fellow named David Jubb, who had a group in New York City who wrote some great raw food books as well, a wonderful raw food teacher. And as a side note, the most amazing thing happened to me. I was in Melbourne last week at a raw food restaurant. Guess who walks in the door? David Chubb. Uh, I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> I was like, what are you, following me halfway around the world? Uh, so I just posted him on my video show today, actually. Everyone knows my video show, right? Yeah. You either all know it or you're not paying attention. <laughs> Good. All right, so, so, uh, uh, so, so it was amazing. So I spoke to him, and anyway, so, those, so I, I went to those groups, and I started speaking at those groups and everything else. I started talking about it a little bit more and everything else. I wouldn't talk to people out of those groups. Well, then one day a friend of mine was in touch with me uh, when we were younger, and he called me up one day. He didn't know he said he wasn't doing too well. I said, what's wrong? He said he had something called inflammatory bowel disease. I've never heard of it. <laughs> I said, not only have I heard of it, but I've gotten cured from it. He said, did you get your colon taken out? I said, no. <laughs> he said, but that's the only way to cure it. You know, I said, no, I just changed my diet and my lifestyle, and I got better. He said, well, in medical school, they teach us that there's no studies to prove that that would work. I asked him if he did my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he didn't, but he went to, that's what they teach in medical school. They don't teach health. They're legal drug dealers. They teach controlling disease with drugs. Well, when, when, when finally, after going with it, I finally said, okay, I'm going to tell him what I'm doing. He already knows I'm crazy because he was a friend of mine, so I don't care what he thought. Well, I told him he had to go on a juice fast. Now, I told him, you know, he has to take it day by day, it has to be fresh juices, you know, and I'll help him make the juices, you know, I'll help him with it. He said, no, I'm a doctor, I can do it, I can figure it out and everything else. I said, all right, call me tomorrow, and keep in touch with me every single day. He called, the next day, I called him, and his mother answered the phone, and she started screaming at me. And I couldn't figure out what happened. And then, I, I, you know, she said, that crazy thing you told my son to do almost killed him. And if you ever talk to him again, I'm going to call the police and have you arrested. And I was really curious, but I didn't know what to do. And I waited about a week, and I didn't hear from this fellow. And a week later, he calls me up from the hospital. 
He says, I'm in a hospital. I'd like you to come down and visit me. Uh, and I said, is your mother there? 